come to God who knows us, to the God who created our being, to the God who knows our frailty, to the God who loves and cherishes us beyond measure. Come as you are and worship God. Amen. I do welcome you all today, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are here to worship God and to hear what God is saying to us this morning. I just want I, you to open your hearts, open your mind as you hear the word of God being read, as you hear the word of God being prayed, as you hear the God, word of God through prayers. Let us pray. Our desire, our need, our yearning draws us together to worship God in an unexplainable, unimaginable, unbelievable, incomprehensible love. Pulls at our heartstrings, tugs at our emotions, turns our eyes beyond the sin, or encompassing God, just as we are, we come to you. Forgiving God, more willing to forgive than often we are to confess, help us to see our failings, to see where we fall short, to see where we deceive ourselves, where we close our eyes and ears to the ripples of our wrongdoing. May we breathe in the reality of our actions, the need to change, the depth of our unworthiness. We come before you seeking forgiveness. Now let us breathe in the power of your forgiveness and breathe out the need to live and to love in the shadow of your forgiveness of us, that we may forgive as you have forgiven us. Be with us, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Okay. I'll ask Brother Ben to come and read from the book of Matthew 18, verses um, 21 to 35. Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Thank you. Good morning, my amazing brothers and sisters. Uh, it's great to be here again and um, share the word of God with you or read the word of God more, more to the point. Um, as Johnson mentioned, I'll be reading from Matthew 18, 21 to 35. And it's about the parable of the unmerciful servant. So, then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he, began to set, as he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow, servants, his fellow servant fell on his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went out and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. This is how my heavenly father will tweet treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. And this is the word of the Lord. Now we'll get Johnson back to come and share his message for today. Awesome. Thanks, Johnson. Thank you, Ben, for the reading of the word. Uh, let us bow our heads and pray. God of love and grace beyond our telling, we bring our thankful hearts to you, acknowledging that without you we are nothing. And with you, we can be so much more. Thankful that you care for us. 
and love us beyond measure, that you have endless patience with us, that you teach us time and again what is to be committed to you and your way. Thankful that you reveal yourself to us in myriad ways to inspire us and evoke within us a heartfelt response. Thankful that while on this for everyone who will come to you and accept you, it is for me, for me, and I may know it deep within, with overflowing hands, hear our prayer, Father. Help me, Lord Jesus Christ, when I proclaim the word of God, that people are open to hear the message, not judging who I am, but listening to the message of God. Be with us, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. My theme this morning is how do we forgive? How do we forgive? In today's lesson, Simon Peter wanted to know exactly what the master expected out of him when it came to forgiveness. The prominent rabbis of the day were teaching that one should forgive his brother three times. If he wronged you first time, you forgive. Second time, you forgive. Third time, you forgive. Fourth time, no. That is what it was. So Peter mentioned a bit further. Was that enough? Simon Peter wondered. So one day he asked Christ this important question, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I'll forgive him as many as seven times? Peter was exceeding the demands of the rabbis, but he still was unsure that he was doing what Christ expected of him. Some of us probably would like an answer to the same question. Forgiveness is a big problem in our lives. There have been persons who have wronged us and it is so. So difficult to let go of our feelings of anger, resentment, and even hatred. For many Christians, forgiveness of people who have hurt them is the biggest obstacle to their mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Do you understand why we must forgive? Our refusal to forgive one who has hurt us can have devastating effects not only on them, but also on ourselves. It can shorten our lives, poison our memories, weaken our relationship with God, and even afflict our feelings of self-worth. Raising up our blood pressures. This is an addiction to the damage to the relationship with the person we cannot forgive. So that is a high price to pay in order to hold on to resentment, anger, and even hatred. But how, you may ask, how do we forgive those who have wronged us? is the question which is really at the stake. How do we let go of the pain, the resentment, the sense of betrayal? We let go, first of all, by recognizing that we ourselves have been forgiven. We have been forgiven and thus we are able to forgive others. I am a forgiven sinner. So that is the reason why I am able to forgive others. Because I know that I am a sinner. Saved by the grace of God. But it is only the grace that makes me able to forgive others. Jesus followed his answer to Simon Peter with an interesting parable of a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. One of his servants owed him 10,000 bags of gold. Since he was not able to repay the king, the king ordered that a man and his family and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before the king. Be patient with me, he begged. And I will be, pay back everything. At this, the king, feel pity on him, cancel the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed his fellow and servant and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me. He demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me, I will pay it back. But the servant who had been forgiven a debt of him, 10,000 bags of gold, refused. Instead, he had the man who owed him a hundred silver coins thrown into prison until he could 
pay the debt. When the other seven saw that what had happened, they were outraged and told the king everything that had happened. Then the king called the seven in. You wicked servant, he said, I cancelled all the debts of yours, yours because you begged me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, the king handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. So then Jesus added these ominous ways. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. That is a serious indictment for the sin of having an unforgiving heart. Some of us, every time we pray, we ask God to forgive us our sins. How many times do we ask God to forgive our, our sins? If it is every day, which means maybe 365 times in a year, that's a countless number of requests for forgiveness of a lifetime. And yet we may carry in our hearts grievance towards others that we should have let go of long ago. We let go of these grievances, the pain and resentment of betrayal, first of all, by recognizing that we ourselves have been forgiven through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we could let it go. Dwight L. Moody once put that grace in a beautiful way. He wrote, I can imagine Jesus saying, God search out the man who put the crown of thorns on my bro. Tell him I will have a crown for him in my kingdom if you accept salvation. And there shall not be a thorn in it. Find the man who smote the reed on my head. Drive the thorns deeper into my bro. Tell him I want to give him a scepter. Go seek out that poor soldier who drove the spear into my side. Tell him that there is a nearer way to my heart than that. That is the forgiveness of which Christ is capable. That is the forgiveness that Christ wants us to show towards others. In the second place, we need to recognize that forgiveness is the most powerful witness we have to, to the activity of grace in our own lives. Want the world to know that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Forgive someone who has done you a terrible thing. Then the world will know that you are a Christian because they are able to forgive. Many of us remember the horror we felt on June 17, 2015, when we learned that a 21-year-old white supremacist named Dylan Roof had mercilessly slaughtered nine African-American adults during a Bible study at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Southson, South Carolina. It was a terrible event to witness. But for some of us, the horror of that terrible event was replaced with all as the response of the family members of the victims when they were confronted Dylan Roof in court. They said things like this, I forgive you. You took something very precious from me, but I forgive you. Another person said, I forgive you. My family forgives you. But we would like you to take this opportunity to repent, 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 confess. Give your life to the one who matters the most, and that is Christ. Still another said, may God have mercy on you. As one pastor described it, these people had just gone through the most terrible storm you can imagine. But there was no hatred in their voice. Sorrow, yes, but no hatred. Only love and forgiveness. Can we imagine a more powerful witness to the grace of Jesus Christ than being able to forgive a murderer of someone you loved dearly? Forgiveness is tough business. The great church father Augustine once said that sometimes people in his church omitted the phrase from the Lord's Prayer that says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. They just passed right over that phrase silently, he said, because they knew it would be lying for them to say that phrase loud because they could not forgive other people. I suspect that would be true of many Christians if we took seriously this segment of the Lord's Prayer. We would not want it to utter those words as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgiveness is hard. It may be the most difficult requirement of our faith. But it will be easier if we acknowledge that we ourselves have been forgiven. And if we acknowledge that forgiveness is the most powerful witness we have to the activity of grace in our own lives. And that brings us to the final thing that needs to be said. 
Forgiveness is a positive activity necessary to the healing and wholeness of our hearts. When we do not forgive, two people suffer. One, the one who can't forgive, and we ourselves. In other words, forgiveness is not only something we do for the person who hates us, it is something we do for ourselves as well. I want you to learn this about forgiveness. Forgiveness is about both an attitude and an action. The attitude frees the forgiver, and the action frees the forgiven. So the point is, if you are going to forgive someone, you must commit to doing these three things. Listen to these three things. Commit that you will not use it against them in the future. That's the first one. The second one, commit that you will not talk to others about them. The third one, commit that you will not dwell on it yourself. So those three things are important when you think of forgiveness. Is there someone you need to forgive? An unfaithful spouse? An overbearing parent? A friend who has stabbed you in the back? An employer who has taken advantage of you? I know there's pain. But the most powerful witness we have to the action of the grace of God at work in our own lives is the ability to forgive others. And we need to forgive others. As we forgive, we heal not only the wounds of the broken relationship, we find healing for wounds inflicted in our own hearts by anger, hate and resentment. God has forgiven each of us for every soiled thought, and indeed of which we are capable. Can we not forgive one another? Three times, seven times, yes, even seven times seven. That is what Jesus said. So forgiveness is expensive, but unforgiveness is explosive. And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers, and he should pay all that was due to him. Verse 34. When the king hears about the hypocrisy and the wicked hatefulness of this man, he immediately had him thrown back into prison, and the man is back in debt. You are back to where you were in the first place. He was a forgiven person in the first place. But because he had the heart of not forgiving, he's back to the first beginning. The next time you find it hard to forgive someone, keep this in mind. Forgiveness is as much as for us as it is for the other person. If you can't forgive, it's like holding a hot coal in your hand. You are the one getting bent. That's why a lot of people suffers from a lot of illnesses, high blood pressure. They are coming because you can't forgive. When you see the person, you can't even eat. You can't even smile at the person because you are feeling angry. Don't miss the fact that this man was thrown back into prison and it was his own fault. There are many of us here today in prison built with bars of our own bitterness. We are in prison of our own making. An unforgiving spirit is the mark of an unforgiven spirit, which is therefore the mark of an unforgivable spirit. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Verse 35. You can be theological straight, morally upright, but if you do not have a forgiving spirit, you are spiritually bankrupt. James Oberlop once said to John Wesley, Say, I never forgive. And John Wesley said, Then say, I hope you never sin. Thomas Fuller once said, He that cannot forgive others bend the bridge over which must pass himself. For every man has the need to be forgiven. If you have an unforgiving spirit, you have an unforgiven spirit, and therefore an unforgivable spirit. For the mark of a forgiven spirit is a forgiving spirit. So we need to forgive others. Because we know ourselves that we are not oppressors. We are only sinners saved by the grace of God. If you say you have no sin, you are lying to yourself. That is what the Bible says. It's true, we are lying to ourselves. Because we are human, by nature we are sinners. Only who receive forgiveness from God. So every day of my life, I ask forgiveness from God. I ask God to forgive me. Because the way I talk, 
may offend other people. The way I walk may offend other people. The way I interact with others may offend them. So I need to ask God's forgiveness every day of my life. That is the thing we need to do. May the Lord bless you this morning. As you listen to this message, as you meditate upon it, to say, how can I forgive others? God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus' parables inspire us to pray for those who forgive us. For big things and small. For those who do not forgive, no matter what. For those who do not know how to forgive. For those who do not want to forgive. For those who have not been forgiven. God of forgiveness. For them all, we pray. Be with us, Lord. This morning, as we are gathered here, we want to hear the voice of forgiveness coming to us. In your name I pray. Amen. I ask you at this moment to take your offerings and uh, it's time to just say thank God. Thank you God for what you've done to us. As you bring your offering, let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, we bring our offering to you. We know you are God. We know that you are always there for us. May you continue, Father, to forgive us as we have been forgiven by you. Father, bless our offerings as we give them to you. Especially just saying we thank you for the gift of life. We are there because of you. So, Father, bless us this morning. Bless our offering. In your name I pray. Amen. Let us pray and receive grace. Father, we come before you into a world of noise and confusion, into a world that bewilders and even bemuses us at times, into a world of delight and regret, into a world of hope and fear, into a world that is ever-changing, we go with the message of unchanging God, who gave us all that we might live to the best of our ability. God of all, go with us, within us, this and every day. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen.